All right, so we are back here, and we are about ready to start our match. Man, that's a nice break there. And by the way, I'd like to uh, welcome our uh, special guest commentator there. So for those who might be listening for the first time, I hope you don't mind introducing yourself for this one. Yeah, hello, James Murray from the UK. Uh, I've been living here now in the Philippines for about 18 months. Enjoying the billiard scene here. <laughs> That's great to hear. So, uh, so just a question though. Uh, how exactly did, what made you, uh, what, how did you know about the Philippines? What made you interested in going here and uh, checking out the billiard scene here? What brought you to this here? Uh, I've traveled quite widely. I've been to uh, you know, over 20 countries around the world. I came over to the Philippines a few years back, fell in love with people here, really. mm -hmm. and uh, I always decided that when I retired, I wanted to live here. Mm -hmm. That's nice, that's nice. And um, the thing is, you actually don't live that far from the venue we're up in right now. You're pretty, just a sh five minutes away, pretty much a walk from right here where we are, right? You're not that far away. Yeah, yeah. five minutes away, which, <laughs> is, which is great, so I can get down here and return my life. That's and, uh, being retired, I have the time to do that, which is great. You just pop in anytime and say, oh, look, they, they're up, they're up. I, I th maybe I should try my luck too today. <laughs> Let's go here. Speaking of which, uh, since you're uh, since you're from the UK, of course, and UK has been uh, a country that's had a lot of connections to Q sports. I mean, uh, billiards was born there. Snooker was created by I believe um, you British soldiers who were stationed in India. I believe, if I believe yeah, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. Right, and a lot of the a lot of the Q sports actually started um, over in England, over in the UK at the time during the. Uh, during the during the old during the older times, of course, and then uh, as it progressed, and then that's why we have snooker, that's why we have uh, pocket billiards, that's why we have the carom billiards, which are the ones that don't have pockets and all that. And of course, uh, the one that's really caught a lot of attention for people, especially those who try to st understand UK culture, is snooker, because snooker is a whole different uh, scene. And you've said it before that snooker is actually your uh, sport, so. Uh, for those who don't understand snooker, how would you explain snooker to someone who throws the question? Uh, what is snooker? Yeah, I mean, firstly, I can't profess to be very good at snooker. I've played for many years, and it's a really difficult game to master. The table is 12 foot by 6 foot. Mm -hmm. The pockets are, are not as generous as the pockets are uh, here on the billiards tables, nor are they cut away. So mm -hmm. uh, you tend to make much longer shots, uh, positions very difficult to play. Right, right. And and also, uh, we were talking also about the, the nap on the cloth, which basically uh, the direction that the balls will tend to roll. So that also has to be taken into account when you uh, go for a shot there, correct? Yeah, that's right. Particularly if you're playing a soft shot, then, uh, and if you're playing a cross table, then you need to make, uh, make necessary adjustments according to the nap. And of course, uh, the fact that it's played on a much bigger table, more balls, less generous pockets, and, uh, and of course, the, the method of play is very different. I mean, you, f you, f you start off by pocketing a red, potting a red, then a color, then a red, and then, till when, then when you finish all the reds off, you go to the colors in their successive, uh, in their successive play there. So um, for you, since you're, a snook since you're a snooker guy, there's been a lot of discussion about this, but I think it's pretty fair to say a lot of people favor Ronnie O'Sullivan as the greatest uh, that the sport has ever seen. Uh, do you agree with that assessment, or are there any other players who you think should be in that discussion as well? You know, in my opinion, Ronnie O'Sullivan is, to my mind, the greatest of all time. Uh, he's, um, you know, he's still playing now, even into his late forties. True, true. Uh, he's still at the top of his game, and um, there have been many great players. You know, we had Steve Davis, who dominated for uh, for a number of years. We had uh, the eighties, I believe. Yeah, in the eighties, that's right. And Stephen Hendry, uh, but but Ronnie O'Sullivan, I think, is 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 above uh, all of those. Yeah, I mean, the long run of dominance I think he had for the entire nineties, which. I, by the way, is how I started uh, to learn about snooker because again, always impressed by that, and I all and 
it, he, he, it made me a fan of snooker because of him. He, he's the reason I became a snooker fan. Yeah, he's an incredible player and he's a very natural player. If you compare him to Steve Davis, for example, Steve Davis was, was known as the robot, very manufactured technique, great player, whereas Ronnie O'Sullivan is just uh, almost like he was born with that skill. Right, right. I mean, and, and the fact, I think, I think what makes Ronnie at least the greatest in the minds of so many is the fact that he's been so strong, so dominant for, I'm going to say, like, um, about three decades, I would think. It's like he's been dominant for roughly three it, decades. It's, it's been a long time. Uh, the, the crazy thing is that, that Ronnie uh, sometimes, and he admits this himself, loses interest in the game because <laughs> uh, he feels sometimes it's too easy. Uh, I believe that he spent a number of months not practicing at all and then came back and won a tournament with no <laughs> practice. That's, I mean, that's how insanely good he is when, I mean, like you said, he... And I think he's even been accused at some points of just, he doesn't feel, there, he's been accused of this. He's been accused of at points like he doesn't feel like he's playing, so he'll sort of, you know, just slack off in a tournament. And he's been accused of that. And while I find that a little hard to believe, considering that he is naturally gifted, naturally talented, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how that accusation flies. Because honestly, I just think he's, I just think he's just that once in a generation kind of player. With the way he is. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I would go looking at natural players. Uh, to I'm my sorry. mind, apart from Ronnie, we've got Jimmy White, we've got Alex Higgins. Alex Higgins mm -hmm. is, is, is my uh, favorite player. Oh, you mean Hurri we're talking about Hurricane, Hurricane right? Higgins. Yeah, he was riddled with, uh, you per know, kind of personal uh, issues, right? Personal <laughs> issues, yeah. Um, but what a great player. Uh, I, what, an, what an interesting character to watch. I've seen some of his shots. Some of his shots, when I could see them on YouTube, like the highlights of some of his best shots, and I'm like, he actually made that? I, I think my reaction was like, he actually made this shot? And then he would get the ball to a really good spot, like from a really tough position, and then would land within a hair of where he wanted it. And I'd be like, he just did that. And I'm just, and my mouth is just... My jaws are just dropping to the floor watching him when he does that. I mean, it, to see him at his peak when he was shining at that level. And, of course, a lot of people know Jimmy White. I mean, he's been featured in a lot of... Um, he, he was featured in a Chinese film at one point where he competed against this Chinese guy. Uh, and then he was also, of course, in this match against Efren in the 99 World Cup, uh, yeah. World Nine Ball Championship. People were, have been bu were buzzing about that, too, because of how audacious some of his shots were and I'm like wow he really is the whirlwind something else yeah Jimmy has his own style um, very very natural player I mean going back to Alex Higgins you know, the, 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 the thing to note with Alex is that there's so much body movement on his shots yeah. but the ball still goes down and if you watch his elbow when he plays his shots it swings out after each shot he's basically the an an antithesis of, antithesis of um, how not to play but yet he plays so amazingly that when you see the shots, I'm like, he swings about like, like, like this wildly with his body, and yet it still goes in as straight as an arrow. Yeah, I agree. I wouldn't recommend anybody try and emulate <laughs> his technique. He really was one of a kind. I think the closest I could think of who has that might be um, Francisco Bustamante might be the closest because he has that slip stroke, one right. where he has that, where you notice he wiggles it around a lot, but when he releases it, it's so straight. It's like, wow. He, all that wiggle and it's still a straight shot. You go like that, right? It's like amazing. I mean, it's fun. That's why. That's why when I watched snooker, I was like, I'm amazed at how some of these guys are. And there's been a long running debate about how which is the more difficult discipline, snooker or pool. And, and some are saying that, oh, Ronnie is better than Efren because uh, he plays a more difficult sport. And I and my my retort to it personally is. They're different disciplines. It's kind of hard to compare. They don't play the same tables. They don't play the same exact equipment. So, and, and to be fair, Ronnie hasn't exactly had... I mean, he, I did see him on the Moscone Cup teams, but I haven't really seen him play uh, pool outside of that. And I think that if Ronnie really wanted to pursue pool, he would have played that, and he could have succeeded. But he just chose to stick, to I think, to snooker, which was... Really, more his uh, cup of tea, for mo for the most part. 
yeah, I guess you know Ronnie. Ronnie's been the number one for for a number of years now, and to move outside of his comfort zone into something where he might not be number one. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've watched a lot of um, videos on the difference between snooker players uh, and and billiards players, and and how snooker players can convert to billiards. And and whilst they've got great potting skills, without doubt. And they can place the ball very well. Yeah. The, the, the cushions are different. The, the table's different. The pockets are different. Yes. And uh, very, very few of them have really managed to kind of push into uh, billiards. I think Tony Drago. Tony Drago, uh, yeah. Converted. He won, was it a world championship? I think so. And Steve Davis has competed in the pool circuit on a number of occasions, too. Yeah, he played Efren. Uh, I think he lost... 9-2 uh, or something. Yeah, something yeah. Something like that. I know yeah. it took him three attempts to beat Efren. Yeah. Uh, and eventually he made it. Yeah, but of course, um, the fact that... I, I mean, the fact that... The, the, again, the fact that snooker players don't necessarily win pool championships and pool and vice versa, it basically tells us that there's a di huge difference between those two sports. Like we mentioned. Okay. Uh, no, we're not. <laughs> Whatever. Kelvin. One thing I would have loved to have seen was <laughs> Efren on a snooker table. Uh, yeah, that would I have, have searched and searched, but I cannot find any evidence of him having played snooker. I th well, I what I've heard is this uh, from a source I had who's known and seen Efren here in uh, here in the Results Sports Center. I think here in Manila, they actually have uh, snooker tables there. Ah, I've been and looking for a snooker there, table. there are snooker tables there, and. Uh, that's also where the uh, the national p players practice, like Efren, like Rubilen Amit, like Django. That's where they normally go to practice, especially if they have big uh, tournaments coming up. So I feel like I could show you where that is when I get the directions for that. Because I, I, I'd I think love to know where it is because I've been searching for a snooker table here. I haven't played snooker for decades now, but I would love to just remind myself how bad I am at it. <laughs> well, I, th I think you'll still be better than me at the very least. I think you might still be better than me. Speaking of which, you still have your your pool cue for our snooker? You still have that? I Did still you? have it, but it's back in the UK. I wanted to bring it, but it's an eight and a half mil tip. Oh. And I practiced out there on, on, on the tables we have here. Right. And I was shooting the cue ball off the table regularly. So oh. I've left it there, um, but I can always have it shipped out here. True, true. And, well, since there are a lot of uh, pool cue makers here, um, there are, you could also consider the possibility of having one made here, perhaps? Okay. I could say, but my, my snooker cue is 43 years old. Ah, uh, oh, and I get it now. It's very precious to me. It's oh. bent, bent like a banana, um, but I know, I know how to angle it. It's, it's, still your, it's, still, it's, still your, it's still your wife, so to speak, in a way. It's Absolutely. Still, you're still married yeah. to it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's 43 years old, so... Uh, how did you acquire it? Uh, my sister bought it for my 16th birthday. Sweet, sweet. So it's precious to me for that reason as well. Nice. So um, just for those who might be asking, so what may, what's, what are the key differences most people would no notice if they took a look at a pool cue and at a snooker cue? What would, most pe what would people notice would make it different? Because they're, they're supposed to be the same uh, uh, item made of wood with a leather tip, but... Are there any differences that make a snooker cue unique from a typical pool cue? Um, not a great deal. The, the, the tip will be smaller generally, maybe 8 mil, 9 mil. Mm -hmm. uh, the ferrule will be, uh, will be metal okay. rather than plastic. Oh, okay, okay. So, and then the tips, do they come in different hardness? Do they have hard hardness levels too, like yes, the ones that are Yes, they do. So for mine, I use a, I think it's a blue diamond. Oh, blue diamond. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think a lot of people here also use blue diamond tips here for their pool cues. Um, right now, though, I'm using a Kamui only because I kind of went with a safe bet. I wasn't sure what to get because when I got my uh, pool cue from Kelvin, because he sold me the Lukasi, which is a pretty old one too. It's not old wood, which is why I don't want to sell it either right. because it's a beautiful piece. I just need to have it refurbished. Uh, read, the, read the varnish redone, get the nicks out and everything, and the dings out. And once I get that, then it'll, it, should look, it should look brand spanking new. Yep. Hopefully I can get it rewrapped as well so that I can get a good grip without my sweaty palms making it difficult for me. So that's, that's great. I mean, it's actually nice that you're here. It's actually nice that you're joining us, Chris. And like you said, you've joined, 
You, I mean, you. How did you fare in the, in, in in this leg of the tournament? You're so, I believe you're waiting for the winner of this match, who's going to be up next, right? Yeah, yeah. I had a tough first round match. It, it uh, there was a few key shots where, uh, you know, it, it, it could have gone either way. Uh, I don't think the scoreline really uh, showed how close the match actually mm -hmm. was. But at least you got. But at least you were able to advance to this round. So now. The interesting result is you'll either face Ricky or Toto, depending on um, the outcome of this match. And right now, Toto, he's so far taking advantage. I mean, he already had a plus one, and he has an extra money ball, meaning that he can finish or wrap up a match more quickly if he gets to his ball first. But again, Ricky over here. He's going to try and slide it past that nine, I would think. Oh, wow, that is nice. I think he's going to go for the 8-10 because... If he gets the 10 down, that could mean his first rack of this match. And he needs it. Oh, so close. Well, it's going to be interesting. So He's left it on the cushion. Yeah, yeah. He left it on the rail, on the cushion. So that's going to make the shot a lot harder. I mean, whether it's in snooker or in pool, if it's up against the cushion or the rail, it's going to be a lot tougher to shoot because it limits the spin that you could apply on the ball leaves him a tough not eight though oh that went yeah that that i think was the effect of being up on the rail it really affects your ability to hit the ball squarely and therefore you may throw the ball off but it looks like ricky's got a line here so he's gonna go off the top rail here let the natural angle bring it towards the nine He'll try to hit this gently so that he doesn't overrun position for the nine. Will he get it to the side? Oh, I think he's good. I think he's good. So he's just going to go hit this gently. We'll follow. Let it go off. Oh, it's going to do a little draw here. A little stun there. And he draws it. Nice. And this is going to line up for the corner pocket. And this to go to his first rack of the day. And because this is winter break format, this means that uh, Ricky gets to break in the next one. So we'll be right back to see if uh, Ricky Tick can smash, can find his way back up after this. All right, so we are back here, and Ricky Sabalboro breaking, and he needs to get a ball down to stay on the table, but uh, mm, that's not the result he wanted. And by the way, I'm with uh, Mr. James Murray, who is joining us here on commentary. Uh, Kelvin, I think, just wrapped up his match with his opponent. We'll find out later how he fared. Um, by the way, um, going back to sports here, I've noticed in, in the UK, uh, commentators tend to be a bit more... How should I put it? Um, I think it's I think it's in tune with the uh, the British style of commentary that you have a more measured, rather uh, low key style of commentary that's more educational, more informative. Whereas the American style is a lot more loud, a lot more fast paced. Uh, what do you what do you what do you what do you what's your take on that one? Yeah, no, I'm inclined to agree with you. I think if you look at the difference between snooker and pole, snooker is, as you say, very very measured. Uh, it's seen as a, a gentleman's game mm -hmm. still. It is. Uh, Paul, probably somewhere in between snooker and, and, and the American style commentary, but it is certainly more understated than the American commentary. It is. And um, as a matter of fact, I remember, I'm trying to remember who that commentator was that got, I think it was Sid Waddell, I think, the one who oh, passed Sid Waddell who did the darts. Yes, yes, because he's, he did commentary for Matchroom for Pool as well. And he became very popular here because of how he would pronounce the players' names. 
He would say like, Pinata Magaling, and I'm like, woo, I like this guy. Sid, said, Sid Waddell was very, very popular darts commentator for a long time. Right. I'm not sure his style of darts commentary d d translates to snooker commentary, but I've not actually heard him uh, commentating on snooker, but I'm guessing he toned it down a little. I would think so too. I mean, when I hear the snooker commentators, they're a lot more measured, they're a lot more subtle, and they basically make it more like, they, t they treat every match like it's a master class on something, that you, can, that you have to watch it, learn from it, and so on. And that's what I like about pool, though, because the one thing I do like about pool, about snooker players is that when you have to get down to that stance, that snooker stance, where you're really almost vertically, almost parallel to the table with how flat you are, it's actually a great technique to teach you how to shoot straight. Although, of course, it's not for everyone because some people can't really bend that far down, I think. But what do you think? What do you think? What's your take yeah, on that? Yeah, I agree. I've noticed here that the, uh, the style is... People's style is, is very different here and very free, free flow. Mm -hmm. uh, my style probably does come from snooker and is, is, is slightly rigid in that regard. Mm -hmm. More, more, me more measured, more like, 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 more like a tri you're like, kind of like a tripod in a way when you get down to that position, right? Yeah, chin right down on the cue. Right. And I mean, again, it, that's why I've always had an interest in snooker. Also, that's why I'll when I get the opportunity, I'll. Should get you that place over here in Manila where they have the snooker tables. Yeah, maybe, that'd be great. Maybe, okay. maybe you can rediscover your snooker roots. <laughs> yeah, well, I, as I say, I, I never mastered it. Far from it, but I still enjoyed it. It's a, it's still a fun sport. I mean, even though I know that I could never hold a candle to anyone in the World Snooker Tour for one thing. I mean, my best bet will probably just be: Do you mind if I wipe the ball instead? Or maybe, <laughs> or maybe, do you mind if I just uh, polish your cue? Maybe I don't know. Yeah, you might surprise yourself. <laughs> but I mean, it's but like you said, the fact that the tables are not as friendly. I mean, pockets-wise, and it's a bigger table, and the fact that you have more balls to deal with, and you have to shoot in a particular pattern, regardless of the match. I mean, I actually discovered other forms of snooker that are interesting, like uh, super snooker. The one which has a lot more balls. I think it's uh, you have 15 balls, and I think you have like eight or n nine colored balls instead. Yeah. Which I think that was only tried once. I'm not aware of that one. I did see recently uh, the same style of snooker, but with a golden ball. Yeah, I think uh, that might be and it. And there was a big prize for a break of I think it was one five. Four or something. Is that the ma is, was that the maximum for that particular style? The maximum the, the, break? The maximum for normal snooker is one four seven. And right. Te technically, technically you can make a one five five if you have a free ball, but yes. I, I don't think it's ever been done. Well, it may have been done, but I, I've not seen it. Highest I think I heard for a free ball for an for an above one four seven was I think one four eight, but that was only once also. And I think somebody got a free ball, which is why they were yeah. able to get that extra. By the way, the free ball concept, I think it's something that. Uh, viewers might be confused. Exactly how does the free ball rule uh, work in snooker? So if somebody uh, fouls, commits a foul in snooker, mm -hmm. and uh, the, uh, his opponent cannot see both sides of his object ball, yes. then it's counted as a free ball. Mm -hmm. You must be able to hit the outer left and the outer right okay. of the object ball. Is this the one where you can actually choose a ball uh, alternately, if you can't see the normal object ball that you would you be playing? You can platinum? choose any ball. So if you're given a free ball because you can't see any reds, you can choose any of the colors, but you cannot snooker behind it. So, so, and then that will be treated as a red ball if you pocket it? It'll be treated as a red ball. It's respotted, mm. uh, and then you take a color. Okay. So let's say, for instance, uh, I'm in that situation. You give me a free ball. So let's say of all the balls, I decide to go for the black, which is normally seven points. Because it's a free ball, it will count as one point if it I will pot count it. As one point, that's correct. If I pot it, and then, and then, and the free ball only lasts for that particular, um, for that particular shot or that particular attempt. Just that particular shot. Oh, ah, okay, okay. I was always a little confused with the free ball rule because it's a rule that most other Q sports wouldn't have. I mean. Here with pool, it's usually ball in hand. If you, if you foul, if you scratch, you get to place the ball almost anywhere on the table. Or if it's, let's say, a rotation, you get to place it behind the kitchen, the, the, back, the area where you normally break from. Yep. So that would be it. 
And actually, this is an interesting term I found out. The reason they used the term the kitchen was back in the old day when houses had pool tables back in old England. Uh, the thing was, those houses didn't have a lot of room. They were fairly small. And what they would do with the, di- with the pool tables is they could convert them to dining tables by putting like a piece of wood uh, on top, right. yeah. Well, I didn't know that, but I have seen I have seen those, and they still make them now. They still do, right? They yeah. still do. And the story... They did that with snooker tables, too. They, they did. Not. Yeah, they did, they did. And the story is, the reason it's called the kitchen is because usually in a room with that, in a dining room with that limited space, the place that had the most room to uh, stroke freely from was the kitchen right. because it had the door arch where leading to the kitchen. So that was why the break area is called the kitchen okay, in pool parlance. Yeah, yeah, it's it's something interesting. I actually thought found it and said, "Wow, I didn't know that." So that's why it's called the kitchen because it's tra- it traditionally. If, so let's say we're looking at this table. The kitchen is rough. The door is roughly where the camera is right now. If you're right. looking at the view, so that would be the kitchen view, which is why this area where you're the upper uh, third of the table where you normally would break from, that's called the kitchen for that reason. Right. And then with snooker, I think the main difference is that you have to break from that D area within the kitchen, right? That's right. The D, that, only that D area, uh, nowhere else outside of that semicircle only area, right? Only the D area, yeah, which is, which is marked by the, uh, the yellow and the brown. Right. I mean, sno- I mean I, there are actually some pro players here who actually play um, snooker, but they played snooker mostly for uh, like the Asian games or the Southeast Asian games. Uh, I believe I know I know um, which player played uh, Den Den Santos I think Denise Santos actually played snooker for a short while because she was participating in a snooker tournament somewhere here in Asia and then I know I'm trying to remember who those players are I could ask Kelvin later he remembers them but the thing is snooker just has does have a fan base here but it's pretty small compared to what the UK is where UK where snooker is literally the king of the Q sports over in that area, in that part of the world. But I mean, I'm actually glad to see that over when you play snooker there, um, you're now seeing more players from outside of uh, outside of the UK. I mean, especially the Chinese, in, the influx of Chinese players. Um, let's see, I, I know Marco Fu is one of them. And then Ding, I forget what his dad run. Yeah, and... Uh, the first one I heard who was from Asia was James Watana, actually. Oh, yes. The one from, yeah. Thailand, the one from Thailand. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So J- James Watana was the guy, was the first Asian. So when I heard, oh, wait, we have Asians here too? That's nice. There's mm-hmm. another uh, Thai player that uh, is on the circuit. I, it's Poom, Poom Jang, I think. It Poom, is. Poom Jang, I think, yeah, I've heard that name he somewhere. He is so entertaining to watch. <laughs> he has many mannerisms. <laughs> so basically... You, you come for the match and you stay for his um, court and to say yeah, little you, courts. You watch just for his mannerisms. He's, <laughs> a, he's a, a very entertaining player to watch. <laughs> oh, that would be fun to watch. And by the way, there we go. So it looks like Ricky Sabalboro fighting his way up. And he's trying to see if he can tie this match up. So uh, we'll be starting that next rack in a bit. And um, hopefully James can hang on just a little bit longer for a little extra commentary. Well, there's a break, and there it is. Hmm. That looks dry, though. As dry as the Sahara right now. Eh. Anyway, um, so while we're watching this again, we want to thank you all for supporting us. We want to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, the Break Room, uh, Bar and Billiards, which will be opening this uh, second or third week of September, hopefully, according to Ronald Bacolo, the o- officer in charge. And also Founders Donuts, you deserve this. And, of course, uh, Red Cube Productions broadcasting this match live for you over on Facebook and YouTube. And, of course, I'm with Mr. James Murray, uh, one of our, um, who, is, who, is, who is definitely one of our more interesting exports from the United Kingdom. <laughs> but always, always good to have uh, someone who knows snooker because I've always wanted to talk to a snooker guy about snooker. Or at least because you have the understanding of snooker. You played it for years and it's... 
a sport that, like you said, it, 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 it's been close to your heart, even though on the tables, it's not always been the friendliest as well, I would think. No, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very tough game. Uh, I enjoyed playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know, after many years of playing, mm -hmm. yeah, I just couldn't master it. But I still <laughs> enjoy playing. Well, I'm sure I'm, at least it's a good sport. It's still an interesting sport to learn, learn about there. Um, and then there are other sports, of course, in Q. I mean, the one that I know Efren, by the way, has played it. He's played carom billiards, like the one cushion and three cushion. He's actually played those. He had a match once against, you know that Belgian three cushion champion, a world three, uh, Raymond Suleimans, I think. Suleimans, I think. that He's from Belgium. He's, uh, he's a multi-time world um, three cushion champion. And I saw a match he had with Efren. Efren put up a respectable show, but of course... Raymond was um, just better because it was really his discipline there. But I've seen Efren play it. I think that's why he's pretty good at the banking and all the kicking that he does. I think it's part of it. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't realize there were so many different disciplines of, of, of billiards here and, and, until I came. I've been watching some uh, one pocket billiards. Yes. Which uh, amazes me, the strategy yeah. uh, that's involved in that. You've seen how you've seen how it really brings out, and Efren really loves competing in that because it allows him to show off his banking, his Absolutely. kicking, and then you, you realize, oh wait, you could actually bank it this way, and then you realize, yeah, you can, <laughs> you apparently can. And I mean, I think the, the one where it got featured was the Derby City Classic, which happens over in the USA. And I know it's a series of um, pool events that happen there. I know they have. One pocket, they have nine ball, they have eight ball, I think, and ten ball. So you can join in any which of those um, disciplines you want. So if you want to join the eight ball, you can join there. If you want to join the one pocket, you can do that. And Efren, he cleans up at the one pocket. I mean, I'm literally looking at him and I'm like, you can actually make that. I did not know you could actually make that. You start, you start, I mean, that's why the, the running joke is when Efren's on the table, Commentators sh just keep quiet because when they predict the shot, it never goes, almost never goes yeah, the way they call it. I, I noticed that before while I was watching it. It's really quite amusing. <laughs> it's never amusing. Like, it's like they'll just say, or he could do that. <laughs> they just end up saying that one. And then they just say, well, Efren doesn't have an easy shot, but you never know. They just end up saying that because they realize it's not always, it, it, he he's just plays so differently from everyone else. He just sees the table differently. And he actually mentioned this in an interview. He was asked at one point, uh, how do you come up with these amazing shots? And he said, I watch amateurs play, he said. The reason I watch amateurs play is because they are, well, a pro you can more or less tell how they're going to finish off a table because they have a, they have a plan like boom, 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 boom. The thing is, he said, with amateur players, they tend to play more unorthodox shots. And because they're willing to play more unorthodox shot, that opens up angles for him to uh, use that against other players. <coughs> yeah, so that's it. And that's why it's a really interesting thing uh, when you see that from him. Sorry about that. I think my um, throat's getting a little dry. <laughs> anyway, so while we're, <clears throat> while we're checking out this match, so let's see. That's a push, I believe he did there. So push out rule, of course, and the rules here only applicable immediately after the break. So meaning that only after the break can you apply a push out. And of course, with a push out, your opponent can always give the ball back if he doesn't like it. <laughs> well, anyway, there's a nice shot. Oh. Okay, he's left himself a little bit of an angle on that that two. The problem is I think he's going to be likely to bump into that three and that might cause him a problem if it causes the balls to him to go behind another ball he doesn't want. So let's see. Now he's going to put some draw here, try to draw it back, maybe get some control there. Yeah, that was the worry there. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, Ricky trying to get out of trouble there, but unfortunately, trouble found him.
And of course, uh, we're very, again, we're very happy to have you all joining us here. So James Murray, for those who are tuned in, join me here on commentary, just um, watching this game with interest because, of course, he's scheduled to face off the winner of this match. So do you have anyone in particular who you're rooting for or you're, who you're favoring? Not particularly. I mean, I, 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 I will play my game and I'll just take each game as it, as it comes. Mm -hmm. Ten balls not. Uh, I only started playing ten ball last year. I played eight ball all my life. Right, I was right. introduced to nine ball last year when I got here. Yeah. Uh, and subsequently to ten ball. Right. So uh, in order for me, it's eight, nine, ten. A a any wins I get, if any, will be a bonus for me. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. And hopefully, and we'll see also if you'll end up on the TV table. I mean, who knows? For now, the question here with Ricky is, with ball in hand, coming off that foul, so he's going to try and advance this. He's going to just let this follow through. Oh, he's going to lock it in. Oh, he decided to play a little safety game. Oh, wow. Okay, wait a second. Looks like he's not given Toto a lot of room to operate. But it might have popped out. Can Toto see any piece of that ball? That's a question there. Maybe I should watch Sherlock again. <laughs> the one with Ben Dick Cumberbatch. Uh, that's that's going to help you with your billiards. I think it will. I mean... I like the way he analyzes everything in his head, like he's doing the math figures in his yeah, head, right? Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> that's very true. But you need to execute them as well. Yeah, and at the same time, I just—I mean, I just like the actor. Um, if you, if uh, what was that movie he did where he starred as Alan Turing, the 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 science, the the, the genius who helped decode the Enigma machines from World War II? I think uh, the uh, the Imitation Game. Oh, that's one. Yes. That's a movie, yeah. yeah. That's the one where he played uh, Alan Turing, the guy who came up with a computer that could decode the Enigma machines, yes, which right. shorted, which was said to have shortened the course of World War II yeah, by absolutely. significant time, right? Yes. Yeah. And I believe, and I believe it was over at uh, Bletchley Park. Is it, is that area still there though? In Bletchley, Bletchley Park. Bletchley Park is still very much there. Yes. So that's that's the area where he he did his research with the team and where he figured out how to. That's right, that, that's right? where they were based, uh, and there's still a base there now. They still are? Oh, that's nice. Uh, is, it, is it off limits, though, to the public, or uh, or, or can the public I go would there? imagine so. I'm no, I'm no expert on the matter, but I, I, would, I would think so. It might, it, might, it might require special access, probably, to go there, yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe, or maybe you can access certain areas of it. I'm really not sure. That's right, that's fine. I was just curious about it, because when I remembered it, and I'm like, it's, it's I mean, I mean, it was, it was... But really sad what happened to him afterwards, despite what he did for the country. I mean, he was, uh, he, he, from what I remember, he was, uh, he was imprisoned because um, at the time, uh, homosexual relationships were illegal, which was why he was imprisoned. And then because of uh, what he suffered there, I think the story was he actually died by suicide by eating a, an apple laced with cyanide, which because, of course, he didn't understand why he was being treated that way and it caused him to spiral into a depression and the thing was um, it's just and the, th and the thing was I think it was only like uh, 10 years ago or something when they finally decided to honor him in a UK banknote I believe I just can't remember which banknote it is but so Benedict Cumberbatch yeah when he portrayed that actor uh, Alan Turing yeah. and he was Commemorated in a uh, in a banknote from 2014, I think. I can't remember the value, but I know it's how many quid. I can't remember which banknote yeah, it was. I don't recall that. A similar fate fell on uh, Oscar Wilde. Ah, yeah, who, the, who, who the playwright. The playwright. Yeah, yeah. absolutely for, for homosexuality. Yeah, and to think that, and to think that. Speaking of which, oh, the ten balls down, and it looks like uh, Toto Navas gonna get two racks away from closing out this match. And you know what? That's going to be something to watch out for. So we'll be right back. And um, in the meantime, James and I will have a lot more on our plate, hopefully. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, so we're back to the UK. So I guess now, while we're waiting for this um, rack to be set up here. So, um, so 
what is so how do you feel about um the ch how, so how 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 are others q sports doing the uk compared to snooker like uh like nine ball how do you how, how are their audiences there do they have a lot of players or is snooker or the snooker still hold its preeminent position in uh the uk culture and sport how Snoo do snooker is very popular um uh, from a club perspective, mm -hmm. so people will go and play at a, a snooker club. Uh, Paul, label Paul, generally in, in, in the pubs, as we as we call them, the pubs, they, they yes. generally have uh, a, a room which has a, an eight ball table yes. uh, when it stays on, so you can go along, just turn up and, 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 and play whoever's there. You nice. You need to come with an opponent. So eight ball and, and snooker are very popular. Right. Nine and ten, not so much. Right, Some of right. the snooker clubs or the pool clubs do have the tables. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find that some of the players are probably very good because there's such a, a, small, uh, a smaller interest. Yes, yes. It's a, because, again, when, when one goes to the UK, it's like everyone talks about snooker or eight ball even. But then the other ones don't get quite a mention. Which probably also explains why the players who usually go into the other disciplines tend to be from the snooker or from the eight ball disciplines, I would think. That might be a reason why. Yeah, if you look at the women's snooker, you had Alison Fisher. Yes. Who made a very successful move from snooker into, uh, the Dutch into billiards. The Duchess of Doom, yes. And I think she's still playing even now, isn't she? She still is. Uh, matter of fact, she had a post recently, I think, about... I think she was making comments about how uh, the... Recent rift between uh, the WPA and the um, Matchroom, I think, over playing in certain tournaments. I think, I think they had that, and I think she made a comment to the effect of, um, you know, players should still be allowed to make the decision to compete in whatever tournaments they have, regardless of whether, because at the end of the day, in those tours, it's still the players who are the stars there. I mean, they're the people. They're why people watch the t tournament. Not they don't watch it for the WP. They don't watch it for Matchroom. They watch it for the players who are there. They watch it for Alison Fisher. They watch it for um, Cheska Centeno. They watch it for Rubilen Amit or or they watch it for Wei Chu Chen or whoever. I mean, I, I just feel that it's something that of course players should still have the latitude to decide on without have, being fearful of ha of worrying about oh I'll get suspended if I join this or. Because at the end of the day, it's their expense. They still have to travel there. They still have to make the arrangements there, and that's and it's their living basically. And that's what I that's what I would think, though. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I'm not quite sure what the reasons behind it are. Maybe it's to do with endorsements. Or, mm -hmm. or I, I'm not not too sure. But you've but you've heard of it, right? You've heard I, the I, rift going on, right? I, I have heard of it. Yes. And it's been and it's just sad because it's something. The sport should be unified in something like this, and then something like this happens. It's really just sad because, again, we're, 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 we're fans of Q Sports, and we both want our sports to grow, whether it's snooker, whether it's pool, whether it's uh, carom billiards, whatever discipline it is. Because the, uh, the beauty of pools of uh, Q Sports is there's no age limit on these sports. You can be as young as um, 9, 10. You can be as young as five, six years old, you can be as old as a hundred and you can still play pretty good pool if you're, and you can still be fairly competitive, right? And so, I mean, that's one of the beauties of the sport. That's why for me to see this happening, it's really sad, but at least Allison's still active and uh, we've been, I mean, Allison's also, Allison's a regular. Kelly Fisher was here uh, last year also. I got to see her, Real ni very nice lady too. Uh, there's a whole lot of them, honestly. I mean, I actually know more female pool players than the males because the males are usually, wait a second, he started out a snooker or he was an eight ball guy or something. I mean, I know Steve Davis because of snooker. I know Ronnie O'Sullivan because of snooker. I know um, Michael Hill because of um, eight ball and something like that. Which is, uh, which is an interesting, which does say that at least women seem to be making headway in that sport in the UK. And I'm hoping that it will continue. And I'm also starting to see more women in snooker too, which is actually a good thing. I think it's Rianne Evans I've been hearing the most about. Yeah, Rianne late. Evans has been, uh, has been she's, she's won a number of uh, world championships now, hasn't she? Is yeah, she has. She, she is. Oh, wait a second. Did the 10 just go down? Wow, the 10 went down and looks like... Um, Toto Nava is on the hill. Well, well, what do you know? 
<laughs> oh, looks like, um, well, I think um, James is going to be watching this one intently because if it goes the way it is now, Toto Nava might be the guy he's gunning for next. And we'll see that in just a moment. Well, anyway, we're back here in the final. And we're back here. What could be the final rack here for uh, Toto Nava? And let's see if he, if Ricky Sabalboro can fight his way back into contention. So he's got that one ball down. So anyway, uh, we want to thank, of course, our uh, friend, Mr. Uh, James Murray, for joining us on commentary. And of course, uh, he'll be competing against either Ricky or Toto in this match. And we'll be right and we'll be waiting to see if he gets up in it. In the meantime, let's see what Ricky wants to do here. I think he's going to play a safety here. Hide it behind the nine. Oh, did he get it? Oh, I think he's fine. I think he got it. I think he's got it. Well, uh, let's see. Toto's got a bit of a pickle there. Did he manage to get out, though? Well, looks like it's going to be a, a case of a scratch there. So that's going to be Ricky Sabalbor with yet another opportunity to fight his way back. And he needs at least two racks to square it to a hill hill encounter. And Ricky is looking at that table. Not the cleanest layout, but he might be able to get something down. see if Toto can knock down this three again he's already at the hill but so far the balls have not fallen his way Let's see what Toto can do. He's going to have a tough shot here, but he needs to make every shot count if he wants to advance. Oh, and that's been the problem there. He's not been able to get the angles quite down, which is why Ricky is going to go after it here. So let's see. Ricky... Gonna try and take advantage of this four. 
And I believe uh, Kelvin's back from his uh, adventure. From my defeat. Yeah. Well, what was your handicap? Plus one. See? Your handicap's... Bro, I'd rather have a handicap of... of having at least one or two balls than plus one. Because if you have someone who can... Catch up. Catch up with you. Literally run out the rack when you give them the chance. <laughs> yeah. A plus one handicap is nothing. I guess you have a point there. Yeah, I guess. And speaking of um, nothing here, well, it looks like Toto Nava wanting to put the show here. Oh, wait a second. Did he leave it open? Yeah. So Ricky's just going to have to swerve a bit around this... Um, Around this seven to get to the six, or can he hit straight on? Bit of top left. Just to control the cue ball. Soft touch. Oh. But too thin. Yeah. Slight, slight over, a bit of an overcut mm -hmm. there, sadly. But here's the thing. It's Toto back on the table, and, mm. um, well, he's, he's already on the hill, so this is <laughs> a huge... Uh, <laughs> advantage for him. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. get there. Okay, he's good. Wow, I thought it was going to run out of gas again. Although, I would rather have him take it to the side with a little bit straighter. No problem for him. Ooh, wow. well, that spoke looked like, too soon. That looked like a problem right there. Yeah, oh. I spoke too soon. And by the way, uh, again, because we had a little celebration earlier. Happy birthday to you, my partner. Thank you. Thank Happy you. Happy birthday. So uh, my birthday was last Sunday. Yeah. But apparently, um, they decided my Commonwealth Pool Players Club family <laughs> decided to still have a bit of a celebration. And I'm very, very thankful. Oh, yeah. Very thankful. I mean, pizza, cake, spaghetti. Pizza, spaghetti. Donuts. Donuts and, and what's, what's that again? Is that cassava cake? The donut, Biko. Biko, oh yeah. Biko, yeah, I remember that one. Not the one in Pasig, okay? No, 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 no. Not, not the mayor. Not no, that yeah. mayor. The, the one that was being mistaken for him. Yep. <laughs> you, I, <laughs> and speaking of that, oh, it looks like Ricky fighting back. And apparently our technical director is acting up again. Uh, I think I think you know what that means. It means more, it means more coffee. No, no more coffee, Derek. Okay. <laughs> no, no, he can have coffee. Decaf. Decaf, Decaf would do. Decaf, yes. <laughs> and speaking, uh, let's see. Here's decaf with no sugar. This to cut it down to five four. Textbook oh. shot from Ricky Tick. Ricky and, Sabalboro. And we'll be back with uh, rack number nine, I believe, coming up or? Nine. Nine, yeah. yeah. Coming up next, so don't go away. We'll see if Toto Nava can still advance or if Ricky can make it a hill hill encounter. And there it is. That's break there. And by the way, we'd like to give a quick shout out to one of our players here and a good friend of ours, the man known as the Hurricane, Mr. Paul Ondoy of uh, the island of Negros. Yes. <laughs> what did you do to my Mat Hidalgo? Uh, nothing. It was a fair game. No, he did, he did nothing. Nothing good. Nothing good to Mat Hidalgo. Nothing good to Mat Hidalgo. Nothing good at all. I gave him plus one, Amat. I gave him plus one. <laughs> That's nothing, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, plus one to a hurricane is nothing. It, it's like a super typhoon upgrade. Now I know why you said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's see. Um, Toto's going to need... To, he's going to have to hope that uh, Ricky makes a mistake here because right now 
Ricky playing like the champion that he was last year. Was that last year? Was that, yeah. Uh, 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Tommy was last year, last yeah. season. So we know Ricky can rise to that level. The question is, will this rap be an example of that? Well, we've seen him come up with multiple uh, consecutive racks before. That's true. So, actually, a race to six is too short for him. Actually, a race to six is kind of a practice for him. It's a practice yeah. run. Now, the question here is, how would you attack this? That four is a little awkward, I think. Bottom rail kick. Unless you can still see a bit of that four. Yeah. I think you can still see a bit of that four. Let's see. Ah, yeah, he went for the bottom rail. Tried to go two rails, actually. Now, the question is, did he leave a shot for the four? Actually, it was a foul. Oh, okay. So, ball in hand for Toto. And uh, not really an open layout, nah. but... Actually, if he can manage to take the four and five to the same pocket... Uh-huh. Yes, four, five, and six, same pocket. There you go. Okay, uh, that's, uh, that's too strong. Either yeah, a little too much. Yeah. Can he do some spin here to control it somewhat? Bit of low right English. Just so that it goes Ila back. Yeah, ilalim ka lang. ilalim kanan. Ah, okay. Manakita natin dito. There you go, kill shot. Unfortunately, not. I think. I mean, he, I, mean, I think he just hit it with bottom English. Should have gone bottom right. Should have gone bottom right. Which would have drifted it um, the other go, way. Go, go, go up. Should have made that cue ball go up after hitting the left side rail. Is this a kick he's going for, I wonder? Went bank? for the bank to the side. Ooh. Yeah, that was a little risky. And here's the thing. He's left uh, Ricky Sabalboro a wide open six ball. Now, I would love him to put some bottom English in this one. Yep. Bottom right. Draw that cue ball. Make it bounce off the left side rail. Get to the right side of that seven. Take it to the upper left. And then just push that cue ball. There. Low right English. I shot. I'm not so sure why it went that way, though. Yeah, I might have hit the spin off a little, a little off. Can he see the seven though, and can he get it into possibly the side pocket? Mm, I'm not sure. Maybe he can. Just measuring the angle, I think. Yep. He, now he wants to make sure he hits this precisely because if he does, he'll get good shape on the eight. Mm, to well, a little bit thin, but but the uh, but I guess it's for the it's for the best. I mean, it's not a terrible it's not a terrible result because he left him a long shot, and it's not easy getting back up the table after this. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of travel. Mm -hmm. Well, the natural path of that cable will go two rails, bottom and left side rail. Uh, oh, wait, wait a second, wait. Ooh. Okay, never mind. Never mind. But he yeah, there might go. have gotten lucky. Did he get lucky, like Efren would say? He did. <laughs> he actually did. Well, looks like, um, all right, Ricky Tick's going to have to handle this problem. So he's going to go off uh, one rail or two? One rail. One rail kick right up to that seven. And remember, Toto Nava only needs the 9 or the 10 to win. Good hit on the 7. Mm, he left it wide open. And that's not what he wanted. Now, since there's a bit of an angle for that 7, I would want him to put some top right spin on that cue ball. Yep. Make it bounce off the upper right side rail. Then the top rail. Yes. The too much spin though. Yeah, that killed it. 
I mean, he was trying to get mm. it over towards the other side. But yep. Uh, the spin basically caused it to s stop short. This is going to be a bit of a challenge now for Toto mm. because he needs to get these balls down. Eight and nine is all he needs. Well, if you're looking for a safety here, use that at nine and ten. I think, that's what he, I think that's what he did. And it's perfect. And he placed it very close to the rail. Mm -hmm. Bonus points for that. Now, looks like he's gonna... We might still be able to see a bit of this eight, though. Yeah, he saw a bit of it. Nice counter. And will he get the result that he wants? Well, he's not... He's not disappointed. He's not that disappointed. Not, <laughs> yeah, I think he's just... Yeah, it'll do. Then hit on that eight. Make that cue ball go down the table. Leave the eight near the top rail. Mm. Where's it going? Ooh. Well, it's a tough cut to the upper left corner, but nothing, Im nothing impossible. No. I mean, Ricky has made a few of these on occasion, but they're not the easiest shots to begin with. Mm -hmm. So if he makes this, the angle should bring it towards the other side of the nine if he makes it. I would want him to go left to right side rails. Back to the left, take the nine to the upper right corner. Not that way though. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Maybe it's not so bad, but he would have preferred a different yeah. outcome. But if it would have been this. best if we just put in some top spin on that cue ball. Yeah, that might have helped. Yeah. But well, it's down to Ricky and those two balls. Veteran smarts. Instead of forcing the issue, he went for a good containment safety. Yep. He's basically daring Toto to uh, go for it. Take advantage of the 10. Use it as a blocker. No need to go hard here. There you go. Now you can bank this if you're Ricky Sabalboro, but I'd rather have him go for a safety here. Yep. Then. Hmm. Well. Yeah. And of course, it's still not an easy shot, but the fact that uh, Toto Nava can get to that, can see it, it still gives him an option to put a counter safety on this one. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. And it's. It's done. And <laughs> Toto Nava advances to the next round as he defeats Ricky Sabalboro with a score of 6-4. to four. Great game there. And as we said, um, Toto Nava made it to the finals last time. And he's hoping that this time will be the charm. So uh, we'll be right back with the rest of our, match with the rest of our matches coming up.